What if you could have a FaceTime call with an AI version of anybody, past or present, and you couldn't tell the difference? Well, it's coming. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This video is dedicated towards AI and how it's going to impact you. No matter what business you are in, I'm going to show you this. It is quite amazing to see how many businesses are investing literally billions of dollars. It's not just Microsoft. We're going to talk about that right up front. But I'm looking at some interesting applications for artificial intelligence that you might want to know about. So stick with me. Here we go. Microsoft holding a lot of the cards in AI powered search war with Google. So obviously with throwing billions upon billions of dollars at OpenAI, they got a huge head start. Kind of reminds me of the MS-DOS days. But anyway. You can see here Amazon's cloud business just had its slowest growth in years. But CEO Andy Jassy says as AI spending uh, deluge is coming. So basically they're spending a lot of money on AI. A lot of that I believe is nonsense. Like when they just use this word artificial intelligence. I've seen some of these apps that say they're AI and has nothing to do with that. It's a trendy term right now. You add AI to the end of your website. Ooh, this is so fantastic. So these are the kind of things that are happening. But real developments are occurring right here and now that are making big waves. Mark Zuckerberg says AI boosts monetization by 30% on Instagram and 40% on Facebook. Their stock went ballistic, of course. Now the metaverse, although as you can see, uh, you know, it's not dead. We're not, we're not dead on the metaverse. However, they have a new goal, bringing AI agents to billions of people. That's right, agents. I kind of remember that during the Matrix movie. It wasn't exactly a friendly introduction though. Agent Smith, you know, good villain, I would say, but not exactly the one you want to invite over to the party. Uh, what we're seeing here though is AI agents and that's going to supposedly assist you in different things. I just wonder what this is really all about and is that going to increase your productivity? We'll see. Or is it just about shareholder prices? So here we go. A new breed of overemployed workers has emerged, turning to artificial intelligence powered language models like ChatGPT to handle a significant portion of their job responsibilities. I can't believe this. Look at this. ChatGPT does like 80% of my job. Okay, he says, uh, currently holding down four robot performed jobs, five would be overkill. And so they give a couple other examples in here. And I really do believe that it's simply a matter of time because as of right now, a lot of these things, by the way, something like a chat GPT is, is very generalized. And what's going to happen is, and they're already starting, that it's going to become more specific. So you're going to be able to have uh, AI that is, you know, specifically geared towards one industry or another, and it's really tuned into that. And that's starting to happen is really, really uh, early, I believe. Uh, but what's going on with this is that as they go more towards this, the different niches, it's going to apply better to people and then new businesses are going to be formed. Um, as it relates to this, I just think that uh, for a lot of people, they're going to be fired. Okay, that's a simple matter of fact. So as that big financial company, they can tune their customer service AI to, you know, financial company and the desires of those customers. And as soon as they get that right, well, then they don't need to train people. Do you know how long the training is? I've seen it myself training at a financial establishment. They go through weeks and weeks of training and then they have to go through a testing period with these people over 60 days, 90 days. Did they you know, answer the right questions? We've got to read um, their information in their emails. We've got to listen to their phone calls. Uh, did they do it good? Now you're going to have AI doing the actual uh, conversations with the people, the customers, the clients, and then you could have the AI reviewing all those communications instantly. They don't need to sit there and they don't need to play favorites with different employees. It's simply a program. It's going to increase productivity and efficiency. And especially with the younger group of people, they feel more confident talking, you know, basically scrolling and, and, and typing in on their apps versus actually having a phone call with people. 
phone call, weird, text message, weird. No, I need to have my little uh, blue bubbles on my iPhone. No, that, that's, that's the thing that's going on here, all of this. So AI chats, all of these things are becoming more commonplace and we're gonna see a lot of people getting booted out the door. And the thing is, not being hired back after the cycle. That's the difference. Dropbox lays off 500 employees, 16% of the staff, and why? The era of AI. They're just gonna keep replacing, replacing, replacing all along and as many companies as they can. This is another one. AI set to transform the construction industry. So I'm telling you here, now this, this is Fox. They always love to refresh their pages on me. Supply chain, building material software company Digibuild uses ChatGPT with spectacular results. And essentially, look at this. They can say that they automate the job of sifting through suppliers to find materials and working out scheduling. Now it used to take them a team of humans of hundreds of hours of labor using Excel spreadsheets, notebooks, and manual phone calls has been reduced to a matter of seconds with the help of language learning models. ChatGPT has taken us to the next level. You got to realize this is crazy. Instead of spending multiple hours, probably getting a hold of maybe five or six suppliers, ChatGPT can find a hundred of them and even automate the outreach and begin communications with those 100 suppliers and say, hey, we're Digibuild. We need to find this type of door. Can you provide a quote and send it back here? We can talk to a hundred suppliers in one minute versus maybe a handful in a couple hours. That doesn't mean they do don't have any personal communications. That means that's how they get it started. That's how they can get the ball rolling and communicate so much more efficiently. Do you not think that this is crazy? In fact, I better contact my friend Steve because Steve, I think could really be utilizing this one, okay? Mental note, call Steve, okay? Look at this. You could see the CEO offered a real world example where their material costs were literally slashed by more than half using this new technology. One of Digibuild's clients, VCC Construction, needed a closet shelving for a project in Virginia. The builder could only find one quote for $150,000 with limited availability. With the click of a button, they were able to find a vendor in the Midwest that provided the shelving and delivered it within weeks for $70,000. You gotta realize this, when you expand that out, not just small things, okay, it's you, you just need a, you know, a shelf, you go to Home Depot, you buy it. When we're talking about big, big builds, they can save thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars over a period of time. Do you not think that these companies are gonna employ these tactics? Of course, of course, and it's already happening today. Do you see? This is big. Construction industry, logistics, everything, tech, of course. They're all doing it. AI is going full bore right now. And this is not the AI, like, you know, super intelligence AI that's gonna take over the whole world, no, no. But we're talking about replacing jobs. I talk about the economy, okay? If you wanna watch uh, sci-fi movies, you can do that. Not on this channel though, okay? Snapchat introduces AI chatbot with mixed reviews. Uh, based on what I've seen here, there's absolutely no reason to even have this, but they don't wanna fall behind, so they created an AI chatbot. Okay, now we gotta talk about the next level of this, the regulation aspect and some other things. You've probably seen this already. Musk met with Schumer and other lawmakers to discuss AI regulation. Um, it has nothing to do with Musk anyway, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, the point I wanted to highlight is that with artificial intelligence, the way that it's been going, there is a big concern about it getting too far. And I wanna know what you think. Do you believe that AI is gonna go too far, that it's going to be sentient and it can actually start to take over things? Oh, we don't need to use the lights over in this building, we're gonna shut the lights off. Or we found that you don't use uh, or you use too much heat based on your neighbors. So we're gonna turn off your heat. Things like this. Do you, do you really believe that artificial intelligence will get to that level? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get that conversation going. I wanna see some more comments, please. The comment section looks like a ghost town sometimes and we really need to make this happen. This is something that is constantly evolving, okay? I really appreciate your comments. It's time to protect yourself from AI voice scams. Anyone can create a convincing clone of a stranger's voice. And we've seen this with celebrities as well. AI generated deep fakes are moving fast. Policymakers can't keep up and guess what? 
they won't keep up. Just like when they created that ridiculous, there was some rule that was uh, being put in with the IRS years ago about cryptocurrencies. They called them digital currencies at that time specifically and said, when you come into the country, you have to declare your digital currencies. Like they, they're just oblivious to what they're talking about. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. These guys are so backwards. Anyway, open letter signed by dozens of academics around the world calls on uh, artificial intelligence developers to learn more about consciousness as AI systems become more advanced. It's not sci-fi, this is becoming in the real world. And of course they will not, it will not be kept in check and it will uh, get a little too crazy. After the death of BuzzFeed, news journalists should treat AI as an existential threat. This is yet another organization that is gone. It's just gone. Okay, providing news. Why? All news. You got to understand, where's all the financial news coming from? It's coming from Reuters. It's coming from Bloomberg. You got some from CNBC and a little bit here and there for the financial news. That's it. That's it. That's all. So then what happens? Is that little thing running across the Bloomberg terminal that is literally just a headline. They take that and then it gets spinned into an article that ends up on Bloomberg perhaps. Same thing with Reuters. So then articles come out of that. You got tweets that might come out. Somebody might tweet something. That tweet becomes an article. You got videos created based on that headline alone. That's it. That's what a lot of your friendly YouTubers like to do. They take a headline and just stretch that onto 10 minutes. Okay. So when we see this, it shows us that it can absolutely be done by artificial intelligence. Those jobs are gone. Don't get into that business. Let me tell you the real problem with fake Drake. I thought it was interesting. You might have seen this before, but uh, they were recreating uh, the music. I shouldn't say recreating. They were creating based on Drake's voice and uh, Kanye West's voice. They were actually creating music that didn't exist. And uh, it, it was very good. It was, it was very good. If you weren't really paying attention, you probably wouldn't notice that it was uh, not actually the voice and then of course now that comes into the fact where you can have potentially a million millions bill what however many new songs created by fake drake every single day what's that going to do it's going to be wild and then the actual artist can't even keep up with it all maybe the ai creates better music than the actual artist it's going to be embarrassing this is going to be a big big change okay keep an eye on that PwC plans to invest $1 billion. I said billion dollars in generative, generative artificial intelligence technology in its US operations over the next three years. Crazy automating aspects of its tax audit and consulting services. So this is going on everywhere. I'm just trying to highlight that. I think it's crazy. AI can identify and design good looking cars by itself. Those are gone too. Humans, you're not needed apparently. And look at this. So uh, this is like, um, basically they call it Annie. It's from a company called Anim Animoto. And you can talk with it, like as if you're on a FaceTime call. And believe it or not, you can just communicate practically in real time. And no, it doesn't look like perfectly like a human. Like obviously you can see that it's uh, graphics, but this is going to evolve. And imagine, just imagine, we're going to be in the point very soon, probably just months away, where you can build your own model. Or others, companies may build another model. Maybe it's Drake. And you could be having a FaceTime call with Drake. And the voice is there, the picture is there, and you're going to be able to communicate like that. I think this is going to open up some crazy opportunities. Also, at the same time, you're going to be communicating at a different level and maybe they can even sell this like the official Drake can have his own app and you could talk with Drake and he could sell a whole bunch of stuff that's coming too. what do you think about this scary or just weird what's your what's your opinion on it I think it's real important to know okay I'll see you on the next one take care